How to remember the five types of bones for your level two and level three anatomy exam. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video you're going to learn an acronym that will help you remember all five types of bones ready for your exam, but also help you associate those bones to characteristics and then locations of example bones um, alongside the body. So you'll be able to understand everything you need to ready for your level two and three exam relating to bones. Now, before I go any further, I just wanna let you know there are three mock questions alongside this video to help you test your knowledge based on the information I give you today. So if you're on our blog, just scroll down and you'll see those underneath. If you're not on our blog yet, just click the link that is with this video and it will go directly there. So first of all, let's get a number and figure out the way. There are 206 bones in the human body. Now you don't need to remember every single one of those for your level two and three anatomy exam. In reality, you need to know about 20 of them, which is really nice and straightforward. In fact, I've got an image for you that is included in this blog. So make sure you go and check out which ones those are. But before you go there, let's learn the types of bones. And then when we look at the characteristics, you can then associate each of the individual 20 bones you need to know to each of the types. And this will help you remember it because you're anchoring one thing that you know to another thing you know. So first of all, let's look at how we learn those five types of bones. So these five types of bones are basically groupings or classifications that are laid out to group a specific set of characteristics of a specific type of bone. Now there are five of them. And the acronym I want you to use is FILS, so F-I-L-S-S, -S, FILS. So this is basically flat, irregular, long, short, and sesamoid. The order of this acronym is not related to the volume of bones in each of those types that we have, but it's a way to help you remember them. So what you might do is jot this acronym down in your notes and then write out each specific type and characteristic next to it. And then when you come to your exam, when you're told or asked a question relating to the types of bones, first of all, remember fills, remember those five different letters, what they stand for. And then from there, you can decipher the particular types of characteristics. So now let's go into the characteristics of each of these. First of all, flat bones. Flat bone is something that is wide and flat. And this flatness allows for a site of attachment to lots of muscles. An example of this would be the scapula, so the shoulder blade, or the sternum, or the ribs. There's basically attachments of muscles going all the way around it. So it not only provides the attachment site of all of these muscles to allow for our body to all stay together and move in an appropriate way, but it also allows and gives a certain amount of shape to the body. So think about the sternum and the ribs. They give shape and structure to the body itself. The next type of bone is an irregular bone. Now an irregular bone basically doesn't fall into any of the other uh, categories that we have at all. So they have a very specific purpose. They're not flat, they're not short, they're not long, they're not sesamoid bones, they're irregular. Now these irregular bones are things like the vertebra that we have. So like our, those tiny little vertebrae that are inside our spine. They basically have a very specific purpose to protect the spinal cord. And it couldn't do that if it was flat, it couldn't do it if it was a long bone, couldn't do it if it's a short bone. So it had to be in a regular style bone that literally wraps around the spinal cord. That makes it irregular. Also the sacrum, whereby it's got lots of little holes in it. Sometimes people think, oh, this must be a flat bone, but it's not, it's irregular because of those holes and the bumps and how it's curved. The sacrum is an irregular bone. So the next one we're going to look at is the long bone. This is the one that probably people are most familiar with. When you think of bones, usually you see the little common icon of a bone. That's a long bone. It's longer than it is wide. And you'll notice it's also got some knobbly bits on the end. Those knobbly bits help it basically attach onto other bones to create the joint and the movement we need by dissipating the energy out. So we've got the long bone. Now the long bone examples include things like the humerus, the radius and the ulna in the forearm. You've got the femur, 
but you also have things like the metacarpals which make up sort of a palm of the hand and the phalanges which make up your finger and toes so they are longer than they are wide and their main job is to lever for movement so they create leverage for a huge amount of movement so you'll know that most of these happen in the peripheral of the body the next one we're going to have a look at is short bone now a short bone as the name suggests is short it is cube in shape so it's literally as short as it is wide and usually used for a huge amount of stability especially when there is a group of these short bones all together. For example, your carpals in your wrist at the top of your hand, they are a group of short bones. At the top of your foot, you have tarsals, which are a group of short bones. Now, they have a really good role of that stability and being able to dissipate our energy whilst we walk. The final one is a sesamoid bone. So if we look at a sesamoid bone, this is a very strange word compared to the other ones of a flat, irregular, long and short. And that's because the word means sesame seed. <laughs> so it sounds a little bit strange to be talking about bones and sesame seeds. But if you imagine a sesame seed, it's very small and it's kind of on, it, on its own. And we're looking at a sesamoid bone of being its own little bone floating amongst a tendon. An example of this is the patella, whereby it's a bone and it has the tendon either side of it. It's kind of floating around inside the tendon. Another example is just underneath your first metatarsal, so your big toe, on the joint that is usually the most weight-bearing part of the first metatarsal, on that point there can be a little sesamoid bone there as well, and that's that sort of floating amongst a tendon. Now the role for this is to allow for the movement, but it also is a huge role for protection in particular. So they are your five types of bones and examples of where you'll find them in the body. What I suggest you do is you literally go through and think about each of these bones, feel it, feel what a long bone feels like, feel what a short bone feels like, feel what a flat bone feels like, so that you know what those characteristics are. And apply that as you're trying to learn the 20 bones that are throughout the body. Again, use the image that is inside this blog to help you learn those 20 bones. And remember, there are three mock questions so you can go and test your knowledge. And if you're looking for more help in remembering bones, muscles, in remembering the heart and the circulatory system and everything else you need to know for your level two and three anatomy exam, then make sure you check out the link for our Revision Mastery Bootcamp because there is lots of information in there that will help you. But it's broken down in a way to help you understand and remember it ready for your exam. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this really helps you alongside your revision and all the best for your exam. Take care.